Hey guys, Noobivore73 here. Welcome back to a Noob's Guide to Feed the Beast. Now, in our last episode, we uh, discussed how to get into a Feed the Beast game uh, by downloading the launcher and making sure you have the right mod pack selected and everything uh, set correctly. So, once that is done and you're able to get into the game, then uh, you're, you're, you're all set to go. So, let's... Uh, Today I want to talk about some of the tools that are that come with Feed the Beast that are extremely helpful. Now, when you first get into a Feed the Beast world, and, and this is this is true for most versions of TechIt as well, and you go to your inventory, you're gonna see this big old list of stuff right here. And and I honestly think this is one of the things that makes Feed the Beast seem rather um overwhelming. Now, this is a mod known as NEI or not enough items. And what it does is it display it displays every item that you could possibly have in this game. Now, <laughs> this is this is the page count. There are 52 pages of items. Okay? This is a lot of stuff. And each of these items are obtainable at some, you know, somehow at some point in a Feed the Beast game. Now, this, like I said, this can seem very overwhelming, but this is actually a very useful tool. And the reason for that is this helps take the place of the, the Wikipedia. Now, what I mean by that is this. Let's say, for example, you are wanting to build yourself a bookshelf. Well, there's a specific recipe for building a bookshelf, and if you don't remember that recipe, and you don't have this mod, then you have to go back over to the Wikipedia, pull up Bookshelf, and look at the recipe. But with this mod installed, you can actually just left-click on Bookshelf, and it will give you the recipe to build it. it gives you, And you'll notice that this is changing, and this is because these are all the different types of wood you can use in this recipe. So, you know, wood on top, wood on bottom, books in the middle that gives you a bookshelf. Now there's other options as well. There's different ways you can build these and as you scroll through it gives you all of the different recipes. Now let's look at something a little more complex. Say for example a machine uh, let's see, don't want to pick too, too complex a one. Let's see. Just sort of scroll through here real quick. Um, okay the thermionic fabricator. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Okay, so this is the basic recipe for building a machine known as a thermionic fabricator. Now, chest, yeah, we all know how to make chests. Gold ingots, that doesn't even, even really have a recipe. Although, if you click on it, it does give you certain ways to come up with gold. Um, there's, you know, it, it'll it'll show you that by smelting a gold ore, you get a gold ingot. It'll also show you that by using a, something called an alloy furnace, you can get it from gold tools, which is actually interesting. Um, so it's all the different ways you could get that. But going back to the recipe for the thermionic fabricator, we also have this thing right here, which is a new uh, a new object, and it's called a sturdy casing. This is something that comes with the mod that this machine is included in. And if you click on that, it will give you the recipe for that. So you can literally go through and go down, you know, multiple levels of items in order to figure out how to build something. And if, of course, if you need to go back, you just click on the main machine again. Um, another thing you can do, say, for example, let's go back to the first page. Say, for example, you're looking at something that isn't crafted, like gold ore, and instead of wanting to know how to craft it, you want to know what it's used for. Well, you can left-click on it for the recipe, and then it'll show you how to get, or how, let's see, yeah, how to get gold ore, which actually you can get it from, from nether gold ore, or you can right-click on it, and it will other recipes. So there we go. By right-clicking on the gold ore, 
you now see how to turn it into gold ingots. And if I were, say, to right-click on gold ingots, it would begin recipes that gold ingots are used in. And as you can see, that's a lot of different recipes. But if you have something that you're not quite sure what it is or how it's used, you can use that method to get a little more information on it. Now, you can also use uh, keyboard shortcuts if you're, you know, if you're not wanting to click. Instead of right-clicking or left-clicking, you can hit R while your mouse pointer is over the item for recipe, or you can hit U for uses. It always takes a little bit longer than recipe does because it's got to go through and search for every possible recipe that that item might be used in. Now, <clears throat> another useful item, or another useful uh, aspect of the NEI mod is this little field down here at the bottom. Now, 52 pages worth of stuff, that's going to take you a while if you want to just continuously scroll through trying to find that one item that you're interested in. But say, for example, I wanted to know about a pulverizer. You could search for it, and as you can see, it's, a, it's an intelligent search, so as you type letters in, it restricts the field to only items that have those letters in it. Pulse former, pulsating chipset, pulverized metals, and of course the pulverizer. So once you have the search refined to where you want it to go, you can just click over here and then you can left click or right click as needed. It will help you find items by their name a lot quicker than you would be able to by scrolling through. Uh, let's see. And of course, once you're done or once you have the item that you need, you can right click in the search field to clear it and go back to the main list. Now, this NEI can also be used if you have um, if you have op power, meaning if you're on a server and you're uh, an, uh, an operator or an admin, you can actually use this to cheat <laughs> or you know go to creative mode or whatever you'd like to do now if you switch it to cheat mode and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do this without turning on cheats on this single-player world <clears throat> now as you can see tr uh, going to cheat mode on the NEI global options opens up this whole section right here now these items right here uh, the rain the creative mode, the magnet, and then the times, those are only available under cheat mode. Now, turn rain on and off, obviously, turns the rain on, or turns the rain off. So if you're in the middle of doing something and it starts raining, and you have cheat mode enabled, then you can just go up here and turn the rain off. And of course, it, there's a little bit of lag sometimes for it to, to kick in. Um, <clears throat> you can also control the time of day. Uh, see, as you can tell right now, it's nighttime, but I can go through and I can click set time to dawn. Now, that those commands mirror some of the typed commands. You know, you can always put toggle down for or set time, but these make it a little bit easier. You can, you know, it's just single button click to, to do whatever you want to do. Um, and, of course, there is creative mode. Now, a single click on this creative mode will put you into classic creative mode, which gives you the list of items that you want to spawn in. And with, with Feed the Beast, the classic creative mode it also adds other pages worth of items, and there's, they're specified to the specific mods. So, for example... If I want to go through, I, I want to find Zycraft, and I want to spawn some stuff in that is just dealing with the Zycraft mod, then I would use the classic creative mode and come down here to Zycraft blocks, and I would spawn me in some red Zycaride bricks, platform, whatever. Um, <clears throat> now, you can also hit the creative mode button a second time, and this sort of puts you in a, into Creative Plus. Now, the good thing about Creative Plus is you can see your full inventory. And these slots over here are for your armor. And then you also have this other 
inventory area. Now you can't access this while you're not in Creative Plus mode, but say for example you wanted to work on a big project and you want, didn't want to sit here and continuously have to search for the things you want to spawn in. Well you can just go through and you can just add things to your inventory and then push them up into this extra inventory space and that way they're there and they're stored so when you begin working on the project you can just drag them out of here so it's basically like having a large chest at your disposal at all times um, but okay so let's now the course key the thing to remember about the creative plus mode is when you leave creative mode or even if you're in classic creative mode, you do not have access to this extra storage. Um, now, the another thing you can use NEI for, if you're not in creative mode, and let me go ahead and switch back to recipe mode. And there, one thing to keep in mind with cheat mode, even if you're not in creative up here, you can still spawn stuff in, because NEI cheat mode still allow basically allows you to pull stuff from this sidebar into your inventory. And you can also destroy things by just dragging them over back to the sidebar and clicking them off. So let's switch back to recipe mode. Now another cool thing that you can use, say for example you're wanting to work on a specific mod and you want to be able to see all of the items that are in that mod over on this sidebar you can click on item subsets and let's say for example we want to look at forestry uh, yeah all the things involved in forestry we click on that actually it's double click and that restricts the NEI sidebar to only items that are involved in forestry now I say that but it's actually kinda of buggy you do need to be aware that sometimes there will be items thrown in that aren't part of forestry mod like for example these redstone energy cells and these soul shards are definitely not part of the forestry mod for some reason it sometimes will pick up other mods just randomly uh, but for the most part what's displayed is just those items involved in the mod that you wanted to look at and once you're done looking at that you can you can unfocus the sidebar by just double clicking on this top bar right here and that will take it back to normal alright so that's NEI excellent tool you know, once you've played with this for a while it's gonna be hard to go back to <laughs> going back to uh, vanilla minecraft uh, another excellent tool that you can use that is going to be extremely helpful is the minimap now if you look up in the, in the upper right hand corner the minimap is some basically it's exactly what it advertises it shows you the area around you um, now you can display the full map by hitting the X key and you can zoom the map in and out by using the Z key uh, let's see alright there we go that's the that's the farthest zoomed out and it shows you terrain around you um, now the full map doesn't show mobs or entities but the mini map does now if you'll see you, you can see all the uh, the the creeper faces and the skeleton faces around me and that's because they are they're underground but they're close to me so if I move as I move around and I'm not creative so that hurt ouch um, let's see and I'm gonna go ahead and make it night real quick so let me jump back over here Go back into cheat mode, and no, that's noon. There we go, midnight. So once it's midnight, then of course monsters will start to spawn, and you'll start to see them on your minimap. Now the minimap will also show other players if you happen to be on a server, or you know you have someone else in your uh, single player world with you. Let's see if we can find some monsters here real quick. Let's see. <laughs> it's kind of a mountainous area, so I have to figure out how to get around without killing myself. Um, the other thing that is cool about the the mini map is it will show large structures. So if you think you're close to a town, you can look on the mini map and you you'll actually be able to see the buildings. And of course, if you build your own house and you build it big enough, 
you'll be able to see it very clearly on the mini-map. And I don't see any... Oh, there's one. There's a skeleton. All right. <clears throat> now, the closer the mob is to you, the more clear the head will be on the minimap. So you'll notice, it looks like there's a whole bunch of, like, dark mob heads, and then there's a few really clear ones while this skeleton just tries to own me. Come here. Come here. All right, let's go back to creative. Ha ha. You fail. Failure. So when I, when I kill this mob, and you'll see that his head is right over me. There's a little bit of a delay, and then that uh, the minimap updates, and that that mob head goes away. So really, really useful tool. Now you know, I don't usually use the minimap on like games like Call of Duty. Um, it's just something I've never really gotten into. But the more I've played uh, Feed the Beast, the more I've gotten to really enjoy having that mini-map there because it just helps you to see what's around you because you know your field of vision is kind of restricted um, because of the nature of the game all right so along with the mini-map and in addition to the mini-map there are the third tool which is waypoints now let me tell you something any eye is great any eye is really useful you'll enjoy it you'll get to where you wish you had it on every game that you played. But nothing is more useful, in my opinion, than waypoints. And the reason I say that is because I hate getting lost. And I always get lost. So waypoints are an absolute godsend. Okay, What you can do is you can hit the waypoints menu and go to waypoints. Or there's usually a, a quick button that you can go directly to establishing a new new waypoint. For me, I've got it set on B. Okay, so you name basically you name the waypoint. I'm going to name this Nether Portal. And as you can see, it's got your coordinates right here, here, and here, and the name. And then you can choose what color you want it. You hit done, and boom. There is your waypoint. Now, as you can see, it's very easy to spot. And I'll even zoom pretty far away from it. Now, this waypoint system is actually uh, improved over what I've used in the past. Usually, the waypoint is just a, a spot with a title on it with... Feed the Beast Ultimate, they actually upgraded it to where it shoots up a beam of light that pretty much goes all the way up into space. Now, only you can see the waypoints that you've established. So that's one thing that, that you don't have to worry about, other people seeing what you put down and, and finding your stuff that way. Um, but as you can see, the waypoint is clearly visible. And if you look at the minimap, you can also see there's a, a diamond with the same color uh, that you selected for your waypoint, and as you move far farther away from it, when it's beyond the, the range of the minimap, it turns into an arrow pointing to the direction that you need to go to get to that waypoint. Now, waypoints are, in my opinion, essential. Before you go searching for, you know, a cave system, set a waypoint at your house. When you head into the nether, <laughs> when you head into the nether, sometime today, Okay. <laughs> when you head into the nether, the first thing you should always do, and actually, it, it, the first thing you should always do is set a waypoint. It looks like in this case, the, the waypoints, the waypoints are supposed to be specific to the dimension that you're in, but sometimes they bleed over. Um, so in, in this case, the, the waypoint I set in the overworld would be useful here too, but if it doesn't bleed through, 
set a waypoint because everyone knows how easy it is to get lost in the nether. Especially if you have like a jetpack and you're zooming around and having a grand old time. I have gotten lost a bunch of times and have been just really stuck. Um, so the waypoint will help you get back to your portal. Um, it also works really well. And as we go back to the overworld, it's really laggy today. I don't know why this is a single player world. I don't know why it should should be so laggy. Whoa. Okay. Really long drawing. It's it's also really useful to have waypoints when you are traveling in the twilight forest because as as big and as complicated as the nether is it ain't nothing compared to the twilight forest twilight forest as we'll talk about in a future episode is based on one principle only massiveness everything is big it goes on forever everything and it's extremely confusing because the terrain pretty much you know, replicates itself. So the farther you move away from your portal, the more likely it is you're going to just completely lose your way and not even know how to get back to it. So the first thing you should do whenever entering a new dimension, regardless if it's the nether, the end, the twilight forest, or a mistcraft age, drop a waypoint. That way you know how to get back. And this is taking forever. I apologize. I may... I may cut this part out. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, hello, Boris. Okay, jump out. There we go. Yep, so, by the way, this is the Twilight Forest. And see, for some reason, the the portal, or the, the waypoint I set in the overworld that duplicated in the nether did not duplicate here. Don't know why. So, yeah, so the first thing you do when you enter the Twilight Forest... Mm, once your computer decides to react properly. <laughs> there we go. Twilight Forest Portal. Change color to whatever you want it. And boom. There we go. So now, regardless of where you go, you will never lose your way out, which, trust me, is necessary. Pardon me while I look for uh, emeralds real quick. Nope. That's uh, okay. Whoa, I hear a zombie. That's weird. Okay, all right, so, yeah, tw uh, portals are extremely... Not portals. Waypoints are extremely important. You can also use them to tag important things. Say, for example you want to tag these uh, these spawners over here. You could set down a waypoint just, you know, like right here. Say, druid spawners. And that way, you know how to get back to them to pillage and plunder them at your leisure. So let me get back to the overworld real quick. Boy, lots of stuff in a small area over here. That's kind of interesting. It's usually a lot more spread out. There we go. Jump out of there. There you go. All right, and, and you know, like I said, with the exception of the, the overworld and the nether, the uh, waypoints that you set are specific to the dimension that you set them in. So the two waypoints that I set in the uh, Twilight Forest are not showing up now. One other thing that waypoints can be used for... Well, actually, two other things. Let me go ahead and, and show you another thing. Now, say, for example, you have a buddy on a server who says, Hey, I just found a really cool dungeon at X500 Z negative 2000 and at elevation 30 okay you can 
type those coordinates in custom and put dungeon. It'd be really funny if there was actually a dungeon at those coordinates in this world. That would just be wacky. And you hit done, and it will plant that waypoint down, and that way you can go and find it. So see, for example, on the, uh, the mini-map, we now have the purple arrow showing where the... Uh, where the waypoint is. Now you can't see these little indicators if you're more than a thousand blocks away from the waypoint but you'll always be able to see the arrow on your minimap so at the very least you'll be able to to figure out where to go. Now say for example you have a bunch of waypoints because like I do uh, I generally will have a lot of waypoints set because I like to waypoint everything. Now if you're looking for a specific item and you, you're not sure which arrow to go for on the minimap you can actually uh, restrict which waypoints are showing. Say for example I wanted just the dungeon waypoint to show I would come over here and I would click on disable waypoint. Now it doesn't delete it. Delete is down here. So it's still there it's just not going to be visible until you come back and you enable it. So once I do that waypoint over here is gone so the only one on the minimap mini -map is the dungeon that's more than a thousand blocks away. Now, if you're in creative mode or cheat mode on NEI, you can also, you should also be able to select the waypoint and hit teleport to, and it will teleport you directly there. I may have just trapped myself in, <laughs> I may have just trapped myself in, in uh, dirt. We shall see. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think I trapped myself. Oh, I'm going to die. Oh well. <laughs> but yes, you can so for example, if you get, you know, you set a waypoint on your house and you go out exploring and and you get just horribly horribly lost, you can always teleport back to your home using the waypoint if you have the ability to do so. Obviously, if you're on a server and you're not admin, you may not be able to teleport, but you know, um one final useful part of the waypoint system, if you will look on the minimap, you will now see that there's a skull and crossbones. That is notification of my last death point. Now, if you've ever died somewhere and not known where you died and lost a whole bunch of stuff because of it, you will really appreciate that particular feature that basically tags the last place you died and it stays there until you clear it. Now there are some versions of the waypoint where it will tag every single death which can get a little annoying. This particular version only tags the most recent death. So if I go through and die again that point over there is going to be deleted and the most recent death which would be closer here would be shown instead. But basically it shows where you died so if you need to go and pick up your stuff and get it you at least know which direction to go. Alright, so I think that's enough information for today. Um, those, th these tools are, are available, uh, uh, excuse me, those two tools are available to you uh, if, pretty much in every Feed the Beast game. Some of them may look a little different, like I said, the waypoints are not always, uh, don't always look the way they look in this game. Uh, sometimes they're they're a little bit different, but they're those those tools should be available to every feed the beast and as far as I know every tech it game out there. So go you know go play with them, check them out, see what uh, see how useful they can really be. The next time we are here, we will talk about some of the new features, new uh, items that you can find in feed the beast that you don't normally find in vanilla Minecraft. So if you guys are enjoying this series, and I certainly hope that you are, please leave any comments or suggestions in the comment section below. If you have any questions about what I talked about today, leave them. I'll be more than happy to answer as quickly as I can. Uh, make sure that you subscribe for more content, and uh, make sure that you slap that like button like it stole something, and we will catch you guys next time.